All right, so Graham is asking the Codex of Codex Sinaiticus. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the Codex Sinaiticus is the world's oldest Bible. If you were to compare and contrast it with the Bible we have now, what would the difference and similarities be? That is a very interesting question, my friend Graham. And to be honest, um, it's a little bit, some things you're implying in the question. So I, I'll first kind of address, I mean, first of all, what is the Codex Sinaiticus? If I'm not saying it right, please correct me. Sinaiticus. Uh, Sinaiticus. So basically, <laughs> At least that's how I've heard scholars say it. Okay. I'm not a scholar, but <laughs> I do know what this book is. It's, or people call them um, the book of Sinai. It's basically yeah. an old manuscript written completely in Greek where um, of basically most of the Bible. And so what the, this book, we all just call it the book of Sinai so I can say it the right way um, is basically it's half, it's all the new Testament, half about half the old Testament and the Apocrypha, which are these, added books that are not really part of the canon. Now, as far as how it's similar and how it's different than the Bible we have today, it all, it kind of depends on which Bible you're using. Um, I'll say first, because um, if you look at the, the King James version, for example, there's a lot of things that are missing in the book of Sinai, as opposed to um, what we have as the Bible today is the King James Bible. And the reason for this is it's just missing. I think I read there's like 14,000 differences between the book <laughs> of the Mount of Sinai and um, the Bible that we basically use today, which um, like the King James Bible is taken from the Textus Receptus, which is kind of a conglomerate of various manuscripts that were written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and, and Greek, whereas um, this co you know, Codex, Sinaiticus, I'm not saying it right, Book of Sinai is only written in Greek. And the reason why um, people say you know, it was only written in Greek is because it was translated um, from um, other books. But the thing is, where I have some um, setbacks between um, using this as a reliable source is, like I said, there's a lot of things missing. Um, for example, if you go to the story of Jesus's crucifixion um, in the book of Mark, his resurrection is not there. And so that piece is missing, which is a pretty important piece. And I know that obvious, but in other parts, like in the book of Matthew, it is there. So it doesn't deny that Jesus resurrected. It's just parts of the story is missing in certain parts of the Bible. Um, but one thing that kind of bothered me a little bit more than a lot of other things is, um, well, there's also many parts of Revelation that are missing, but also um, in the book of John chapter eight, the story of the woman caught in adultery is also missing in the book of Sinai, which I, to me, that is such a profound and important story as part of the gospel. And so um, as far as, you know, similarities, differences, there are some things that are congruent with the Bible we have today, but there's just a lot of pieces missing. Um, same thing with like the Lord's prayer, like the Lord's prayer starts with our father, which are in heaven, but in the book of Sinai, it just says father. So it's missing our father, which is in heaven. So it's just kind of these things and it leaves off the ending. Um, you know, it kind of stops, I think at, um, it says, you know, and lead us not into temptation and that's it. Whereas in the Bible or the book, or the King James version of the Bible we read today, it says, you know, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So there are a lot of these things that are missing, but what I think is also kind of, I don't say disturbing, but, um, they're missing a lot of good things and also adding the Apocrypha, which is again, not part of the canon. Um, and I don't believe that those books are inspired. Um, so I, I guess that's a quick summary of some of those differences, but again, there's like 14,000 differences between um, the Bible, King James Bible that we read today and um, the Mount, uh, excuse me, the book of Sinai, which I believe was actually found in Syria. So it's not even really <laughs> near Mount Sinai um, or where they believe Sinai to be. But, um, you know, do some research and um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on on this question, actually. Uh, Jay or Wendy, anything yeah. else? So, yeah, I mean, I would say that uh, the Codex Sinaiticus is not without its controversy. And, and to give you an idea of background of of the Bible, like I often say, we need to go back to the original manuscripts and look at those. 
and or or you know the original language look at the original hebrew look at the original greek uh so often when we talk about the codex Sinaiticus, as, as tina said very much we look at it especially for the greek part especially for the new testament and um the alternatives the other manuscripts that another big one is the uh, the codex codex vaticanus that came out it came out of the the vatican and then we also have the um, the Textus Receptus line, or you might see TR for, for short. And um, the idea with the Textus Receptus line of, of text, and we, it's called the majority text, because one time almost all Bibles, most Bibles were based off of the Textus Receptus. Uh, we don't have really, 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 really old Textus Receptus documents, but think of it this way, that um, people going out of... Middle East, going out of, you know, where ancient uh, Christianity was, parts of Europe, they make copy after copy after copy after copy in every way that they go to take more copies. And these these copies are even used to make Bibles in hundreds of different languages. So we don't have the original manuscripts, but we have thousands of documents made of copies of copies of copies of, of these documents, and we're able to pull them together and see they're almost all consistent with one another and with that you could backtrack and sort of figure out okay there is a consistent lineage this Texas Receptus line and it's this Texas Receptus line of of um, text that the King James Version is based on and and again we're, we're talking about the text especially that's used for the New Testament um, that's rarely rare for most of us that's where it comes up I mean here the Apocrypha could be a part of it but we're talking about what is the text, the Greek text we use for translating the New Testament. And so King James Version uses Texas Receptus. You have the other ones, uh, more modern texts, go with the cooler, older um, Texas Vaticanus and Texas, um, uh, Texas Sinaiticus. Um, and so that's giving you a background. Right. Why do we care about these? Um, and, and then there's a completely different, there's like the Masoretic text. Um, that is the Hebrew text that a lot of um, Bibles use for the Hebrew part. Um, but sorry, what were you going to say, Tina? And my only thought on that is, you know, as much as, you know, this um, Copus Sinaiticus, I'm not saying it right. <laughs> um, you know, it is older, um, but that doesn't necessarily make it more accurate just because, um, like, if you think about it, like if you had a book in your house that you read all the time, it would wear out a lot faster. Whereas there's a book you're like, this is not a great book you put on the shelf and it sits there. It stays in mint condition <laughs> because yeah. you never touch it. And, and again, so still, who, who do we know who wrote it? How trustworthy were they? What was their source? You mm -hmm. know, so do you go with the one text that's oldest than everything that we, as far as we know, or do you go with the one that a lineage of thousands and thousands of texts that you know, together are really consistent with each other. Um, yeah, so that's exactly. that's kind of where the, the issue goes. Yeah, older isn't always better. That is a logical fallacy. And yeah. there actually is some controversy about how old the Textus Sinaiticus really is. The, um, the Codex what? The Codex Sinaiticus. What did I call it? Texas Sinaiticus. The Texas Sinaiticus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Codex Sinaiticus. We don't really... Um, no, for sure, for sure. I mean, the, shortly after it was discovered by um, this guy, Constantine Tischendorf, um, there was another person who came forward and say, hey, no, this was like a junk uh, manuscript I wrote. And mm. and this thing is not brand new. Yeah, um, and they so, found it in like the 1980s, didn't they? No, no, no. It goes more like or No, no, no. I'm 1800s. sorry. I'm thinking of something else. Um, late 1800s, I think it is when it happened. But... Yeah, yeah, supposedly he found some, found the, uh, talk about Constantine Tischendorf. He was at um, the the place at Mount Sinai where there's the, um, uh, forget, like where, where like monks hang out, sort of that sort of thing. Monastery? Monastery. <laughs> yeah. Great. Like the St. Cath uh, yeah. something. <laughs> I'm forgetting. So it's kind of like at a monastery, and he said he found people there that they're, they're on the verge of like burning these, um, these uh, pieces Papyrus. of paper that had the yeah. had the language on it. So mm -hmm. interesting story, no matter what. But yeah, I, I think what you said ultimately the distinctions are kind of minor. 
you could still get the whole gospel out of whatever you use. Yeah, but like you're saying, I think <laughs> let's take something that has the whole picture and that's from trusted sources. So that's probably the better version. But anyways, uh, let's keep going. <laughs> We could talk about this all day. Yeah, we could. I mean, I could go even further. Like, why is there more in the version to use for the King James Version? There's, that's an interesting story, too. But. Yeah. 